Hey, what's going on, David? How you doing, bud? Oh, doing pretty good. 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 Well, welcome to the Outsider Radio Show and Broadcast. Um, we are bringing happiness to the world through the joys of fishing, and you sent in a, uh, a photo, actually quite a quite a few photos, but we did post the one with the uh, sturgeon, and it's not upside down as to confuse Paul, which is me, because <laughs> I often do, I do okay. get confused. He's easily confused. <laughs> I, so. I do. I've never caught a sturgeon, but it is a very... I, I, the, it's, it's a prehistoric a cool, looking yeah, it's fish. It's a cool looking fish, uh, and I like it. Very majestic. Yeah. Very D- David, the reason he's going off on this tangent is because about a month and a half ago, he was like, oh, look at this lady. She caught a shark, and it was a sturgeon that was just on its back. Yes, and they look like sharks. <laughs> and I was like, really? There is no sharks in Utah. Like, <laughs> just stop. You can't <laughs> catch a sturgeon in the desert, Paul. Yeah, you I can't. mean, not no shark. Yeah, he, yeah, see, I still got it backwards. I'm still confused to this day. He's com- you're confused on everything. And David, they want it. They want to make a shirt, and it's it says sturgeon spelled wrong, and it says like a shark, but it's not. And we're we're going to eventually make a shirt like that and put it up on the store for people who follow the podcast, just because it's 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 pretty funny. We should put it in quotations. Well, I think. <laughs> Yeah, I think I'd have to buy one of those. <laughs> <laughs> well, David, we enjoyed the story that you sent in uh, about uh, your history growing up fishing with Dad mm-hmm. and, mm-hmm. you know, fishing the desert, and now you're sharing that same experience with all of your grandchildren. So, first off, thank you to Dad for all the memories, and thank you for spreading happiness to your family and friends and mm-hmm. all the outsider fans by sending in the photo and coming on the 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 podcast so thank you very much uh we're happy to have you absolutely and the the format it's a pleasure to be here yes thank you very much uh thanks for being a a good sport about it the 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 format is just uh, where you caught the fish if you want to tell us uh if not that's okay too we'll send tommy to the wrong location and um (laughs) the (laughs) the the bait that you used and then uh, the size if you were able to measure it and uh, <clears throat> this the podcast is going to be uploaded later today and and then um yeah that's about it right Tom? yep yep yeah. that's about it so david the show is yours now okay well just a, a little recap on the, the story i sent in mm-hmm. uh, my dad kind of got us me and my brother started fishing when i about 10 years old um but my dad was a hard-working guy, and he just wasn't home that much to take us fishing. But my grandfather was very instrumental in my early fishing development. He took me quite a bit, even though he didn't fish. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's, uh, ch- you know, childhood memories that I'll cherish forever. Good. Uh, yeah. Growing up in the that's California awesome. desert, we were very limited on what we could catch. Um, any waterways there were man-made. Mm-hmm. I fished quite a bit in the California aqueduct system, which is just basically a big concrete canal. Yep. Mm-hmm. And uh, learned how to catch big catfish, and that was my thing. I'd take bass guys and trout guys out catfishing that I worked with, and they'd say, you know, show me how to do it. Most of them couldn't be patient long enough to catch a big catfish, and they'd get frustrated and give up while I'm catching large catfish. And they, they just couldn't believe it. Um then when I was 25, moved up to Washington State with my first wife and uh, fished almost exclusively in salt water. Okay. Uh, which my dad always said, you, you know, you go to the ocean, you'll never go back to fresh water. That's a very valid statement, can, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I could see where that may be for some people, but fast forward, you know, 17 years and now I'm living in the desert again, but now I'm up here in Idaho, and I don't like eating freshwater fish, but I like catching fish. Mm-hmm. So we go out and we catch anything that swims, but I target um, sturgeon, carp, and catfish, mm-hmm. because here the carp get very large, the sturgeon, and that's a baby there. Yeah, uh, That was my first sturgeon trip, and I caught a three-foot that day and then that four-footer, and I rolled him up upright 
for the picture. Um, and I was excited. Four foot fish, that's nothing to sneeze at. Yeah, and where used to get the trout. Me, said, oh. Yeah, the guy that took me says, oh, that's just a baby. And I'm looking at him like, a oh, baby. Well, <laughs> the average size sturgeon here is in the seven, eight foot range. Yeah, oh, my, oh, um, my. That's a shark size. Up to 12 foot. Yeah. <laughs> and he is again with a shark, see? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, that, that particular fish there, I caught them uh, below Lower Salmon Dam, um, right outside of town called Bliss. Okay. Okay. And it's a common spot. We fish from the bank. Uh, this last year, I had a fellow over in uh, Napa, Idaho, build me a sturgeon rod that I could use on my inflatable pontoon boat. Nice. And I've got a couple of inflatable pontoons, and this year, I'm going to do sturgeon with the uh, pontoon. What's a good so, bait for, or how do you catch a sturgeon? Because uh, for uh, those of who are going to listen in and haven't done it too often or not very good at it, what's a good setup and what kind of bait are you, what do you like to use to catch those those things? It's a pretty simple setup. Uh, if you're going to bank fish, you need about a 13-foot surf pole. Okay. Uh, heavy line, 80-pound main line. Mm -hmm. uh, heavy weight. And they, they have a specific sturgeon rig that you can buy. Uh, because the um, line to the hook needs to be a lighter weight than the main line, and you need a slider for the weight, and the weight needs to be able to break off in case it gets hung up in the rocks so the fish doesn't wrap up in a rock and die. Gotcha. But it's just a big bait. Um, we would like to use horse herring. I'll uh, order those in, and they come in frozen from the coast. Okay. Um, some people here use what they call morts, mortality trout from the hatcheries. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. work really well. Um, there's uh, commercially sold sturgeon bait. Um, one particular uh, brand name is uh, Sturgeon Candy. Okay. And it's uh, pickled uh, herring, I believe. So just a big piece of stinky fish. Okay. Fair enough. Almost like you're almost like you're fishing catfish kind of thing. Just you know, the the stinkier the better kind of thing. Well, just uh, just not stinky like catfish bait. No, no, that but, yeah. Uh, <laughs> like the pickled the sturgeon candy is a pickled fish. Gotcha. Um, some guys use their own different uh, brine treatments to get their own particular flavor. Interesting. Um, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a lot of fun and on a boat. On a boat, we use boat poles, you know, a shorter pole. Yeah. Uh, the bank guys use these 13-foot poles so they can cast out in the river. Gotcha. All right. Well, that sounds cool. Cause they're a lot of fun. They get big. Oh, yeah. I mean, we, we have, um, we're hooked up with uh, with a guy named Ryan from uh, Columbia River Hookers, and uh, they fish uh, they fish the you know the Columbia River obviously, and uh, they he he goes out and he catches big old eight footer seven foot sturgeon. I mean, <clears throat> he's he's taking people out all the time, and I mean, it's it's impressive seeing how huge these things can get. You sent in a oh. amazing. Yeah. You sent in another photo of uh, you fishing. It looks like halibut. Mm -hmm. So you're close to. Uh, and you, you actually, he you he sent in so many photos. Like we have to have him on again to talk about all yeah. the different fishing that. Well, he, he's he's lived a lot of places. He said he's you know Washington coast and Idaho and. You said you were in California. Where whereabouts in California? A little town called Hesperia. I uh, know Hesperia. We know Hesperia. We're yes. we're from Southern California, so okay. Hesperia is not that far from us. One of our uh, engineers is uh, lived in Apple Valley for a really long time. Yep, 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 yep. Okay. So yeah, we we're familiar yep, with that area. So that's where the aqueduct fishing kind of came in, huh? It did. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Uh, nice. Raised there. Twenty five years old. I moved away and had never been back. So. Cool, cool. Well, that's yeah, the halibut. Um, yeah. I caught the halibut when I lived up in Washington. And one of the other pictures that I had there with, uh, that I sent in was a cabazon. 
which is just a big old ugly rockfish that you catch off the reefs. Yeah. And I, I would have to say, out of all the fishing that I've done, uh, ocean fishing in the California waters and then up there in Washington, I would much rather go to, to off the coast of Washington and fish. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Good, we have uh, good friends out there. Uh, I might actually have a brother that goes... Uh, He's in construction, so he's up and down the Pacific Northwest. He's in Washington, Oregon, uh, Wyoming. Goes that whole area. So he, uh, we, you know, we try to fish with him. But it, you know, it, it is true. Like fishing, fishing ocean is is um, <clears throat> it's a lot. It's a lot more different. It's it's just. You know, the last part of that story was I don't ever catch fish with well, we know my that. brother. We you don't ever catch fish anyway well he doesn't fish much and so his tackle box doesn't have like what we need and i never take anything with me because i think i'm gonna just be like go over there and catch fish and it just it just i don't i I hear stories from people like catching fish all the time and then I, i go over there and it's like hey guess what you didn't get to get a photo up or you didn't even get a bite. Again, Paul, you, you just don't catch fish at all. <laughs> I mean, I've been fishing with you many times. I think in the many times that we went, I think I've seen maybe three come up. I'm having, not having good luck this year. I've been no, five times not. and, and uh, haven't caught anything. I, We're going to go today yeah. after this. and um, But, yeah, David, thanks for sharing your fish story. We loved it. We love that you... Uh, have a, a background story uh, you know dad and grandpa are t- we're taking you fishing and uh now you're sharing it well, with all yeah he's the carrying others. on the legacy kind of thing like he's just keeping you know keeping he has it another going. photo with uh you know part of the family ah, she's little, a little girl catching fish little fishing buddy little little fishing buddy yeah. and so please continue to send in the photos absolutely uh, we uh, will you know we kind of cut your other story short um so uh, you know, we'll have you back on, and um, thanks for participating. And uh, on, I'm an outsider group. Yep. And um, keep the yeah, photos come coming. Anytime. We'll have you back on, man. From all of us here yeah, at great. Outsider uh, Fishmore Tight Lines. Tight Lines, bud. Have a great Saturday. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday, bud. You guys do the same. Thanks. Thank thanks, you. David. Take care. Bye.